so cool thanks Great. So welcome to the uh, Network Service Mesh meeting. Uh, we have uh, we have three general meetings. We have this meeting, which occurs every Tuesday at 8 a.m. There is a NSM document meeting, which uh, uh, is going to be switched to every month. Um, and there is a use case meeting, which has been uh, <coughs> postponed for July since uh, people running it have been um, have been uh, out for various reasons. Uh, but we'll reconvene on August 13th, which is approximately two weeks from now. We also participate in the CNCF Telecom User Group. Uh, the next one will occur this coming Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, does anyone know the status of the CNCF networking uh, working group? I, I heard that those were, in, were not running at the moment. I'll check up. I don't know one way or the other. Uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll check up on that. Um, we, <coughs> we also have uh, events coming up. We have DPD users, DPDK user space in Bordeaux, France, uh, where we'll talk about the state of DPDK. We have a potential talk in September 19th or 20th uh, with Open Core Summit, uh, depending on uh, depending on Prem. Uh, Prem is not on today. Uh, we have ONS Europe, where we have a extensive schedule, um, and that, that includes discussions on CNFs, uh, discussion on the CNF testbed kernel based forwarding planes, uh, service mesh interface, inter uh, interoperability with NSM. We have the CNCF Telecom User Group, uh, at, which it will be run by Dan and uh, Dan Cohn and, uh, and Taylor. We also have a tutorial on driving telco performance using the test bed. Um, please pre-register uh, if you intend to go. We have Embracing cloud native on the path to 5G, which is a panel discussion, and I'm sure there'll be something else that'll pop up. Um, we have cloud native revolution by Comcast Labs in October 8th. So if anyone intends to talk there, the call for paper closes on August 16th. Uh, there is open source summit coming up in October 28th. The call for papers is already closed. Um, we are waiting for notifications this Monday on whether Nikolai and Radoslav and Ivana's talks have been accepted or not. There is the EDGE Congress in Austin um, and the schedule, I see, the schedule announced with a link. Uh, so there is, the, there is a schedule, I don't know if we have anything on NSM, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, but it still may be useful, especially if you're in the area. We have Istacon, of which uh, Ivana has a talk accepted. That'll be in Sofia, Bulgaria in November. Um, we have KubeCon in late in uh, November 18th through 21st coming up, uh, which the call for papers are already closed. We have multiple talks that have been submitted. We will get a notification on them on September 3rd. Um, and then the schedule announced on September 5th. Uh, we, we also have co-located events and KubeCon going on with Service Mesh Con and Envoy Con. So those occur the, the day before. So Envoy Con already has uh, uh, any, already has the, the, their call for, call for uh, proposals closed. Uh, is there any talks that, that were submitted to John Wickon that people are aware of? Uh, 
I think that NSM and Envoy has been submitted by Tim, if I'm not uh, wrong. Ed, can you correct me here? Uh, to Service Mesh Con? No, no, no. Uh, Envoy Con, there was. Uh, oh yeah, I believe I believe that's true. I can go check. <coughs> I can just go check with Tim about that. But that would be Tim Swanson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be but Tim. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can I can definitely double check with him there. I know he was looking to do something there. Mm -hmm. um, and we should probably work on some submissions to Service Mesh Con as well. Cool. So the deadline for Service Mesh Con is September sixteenth. So we still have a little bit of time for that. But, no. no, sorry, August thirtieth. I got the time wrong. Okay. Well, one, one month. Oh, okay. Yeah, one month. <laughs> yeah, it was practically eternity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then until it's like right now. <laughs> um, and uh, again, we had the Edge Computing World on December 10th through 11th in Mountain View at the Computer History Museum. Um, I'm, I will reach out to guy who's running that to see if he has further information or is that actually happening. Um, there's also a recurring call for demos on the Kubernetes community meeting. Um, so we should consider doing something there to, uh, to uh, as we start to, to close in on the uh, KubeCon cycle. <coughs> and any events that NSM has a presence on, please add to the, please bring it up here or add to the website. And with that, um, Lucina, you have the floor. Great, thank you so much. With the announcement of the Open Networking Summit in Europe being announced, it was easy to find a lot of content to post to the N Service Mesh Twitter account. So. Uh, posted and retweeted 35 times, gained 27 more followers, followed a few more related folks. Uh, this week's plan, I'll continue announcing the ONS EU events. I'm doing one a day, so I'm near the end. And towards the top, after each event, you'll see the word tweet with a link, and that's the link to the Network Service Mesh accounts tweet. So anyone's welcome to retweet, share um, from there. Those tweet links are awesome, by the way. I've already availed myself of them a couple of times so far. Yay, good. Yeah. Um, also, like the 27 followers in a week is quite a lot. I mean, we, we're, we're growing by leaps and bounds. You're doing an excellent job. Thank you. Yes, that was um, a surprising number for this week as well. But we've got a lot of cool things going on and um, exciting events to look forward to. So I'll keep on posting about our events and I'll also share the 010 release announcement when ready. Are there any other items um, you'd like me to look into for this week? I, I think you're doing an amazing job. I, I think that's the stuff I know about. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I would like to use this. Am I muted? Yes, I am. Uh, I would like to use this uh, as a kind of uh, move to the next topic here. Uh, if you don't mind, Lucina. So sure. I would like to start uh, start uh, to start uh, running this Asia friendly, if we want to call it like this, probably not uh, the uh, work group code that actually um, uh, okay. As I wrote here, uh, it should happen every second Tuesday, uh, 10 to 10:30 a.m. CET. That would be like 4 p.m. in Shanghai, and the zone there the time zone there so i guess it would be i mean uh, more 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 friendly to the uh, potential um, users and people interested in asm that are more uh, in asia um so uh, i would like to ask you lucina to help me setting this up uh from uh, what you know, and probably announce it also <laughs> uh, on Twitter, <laughs> because you know <laughs> I may end up uh, sitting uh, all alone for half an hour talking to myself. <laughs> well, I mean, we do have some folks. I don't know if we if they're attending today, but we do have folks who routinely attend 
um, from Huawei and some of these others. So yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so basically, as soon as there is a, as soon as we we've actually got that up on the calendar and up on the website, and we get a tweet promoting it, um, I'm I, I know a bunch of folks in in the direction of Asia who would be super excited. I think to uh, share a meeting on NSM that is actually in their time zone. Um, you know, they, they're not staying up until eleven o'clock at night to attend. Um, so I, I, I think we can definitely get some promotion behind this, but let's let's get it up in all the usual places and get a tweet going and everything else. And thank you so much for being willing to do this. Um, you know, it, it's it, you know, for those of us in North America trying to do something at 4 p.m. on Shanghai time is, time is unbelievably painful. <laughs> it looks like for you, it's hard to say because you're always up so late. Um, but I'm hoping that 10 a.m. is not terrible for you. <laughs> no, 10 a.m. is perfect. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that'll be 2 a.m. my time, so um, maybe I'll make the occasional special appearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, <coughs> my idea is primarily to gather feedback, and uh, if someone is interested in discussing any speci specific topic, to try to bring um, you know questions or whatever is needed to the work group call later. So what I would uh, like to ask is, I'm not sure if I have access to the right calendar, et cetera, et cetera, just uh, help there uh, to set this up properly. Uh, and uh, if needed, I can add uh, any PRs to the site or whatever is needed, but especially for the calendar and you know all these social media <laughs> uh, things, I would definitely uh, use, can use some help. No, that, that's all good. and and. I mean, you should have access to the calendar, but but there's no reason that you would remember how to go add things to it, mm -hmm. and um, and so I'm happy to help you on that front. And then yeah, just a PR to the website would be great um, as well. Good. Okay. So if if uh, if anyone that's on this meeting or is listening or is listening to it uh, later, please you know spread the the news, the announcement. And just uh, I don't know people that are interested from these time zones to to mm -hmm. more, uh, yeah join. Okay. Also, any suggestions about the format or whatever? I, I guess uh, we should be able to use the same Zoom, uh, like uh, this one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, that's it. Okay, just to. Just to be clear, so this is, uh, is this every second Tuesday of the month or is this every second uh, Tuesday as in every every other Tuesday? Every other Tuesday probably is mine. I mean, I just want to start the next Tuesday, then skip one, then, then, then. I mean, I don't like this every second Tuesday of the month, et cetera, et cetera. It's just like every other Tuesday probably is the proper wording here. Cool, just one clarity. So, um, second other yeah okay <laughs> good <clears throat> thank you that that's 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 all kinds of awesome so, let's see how it goes <laughs> yeah so for those of you uh, who are up at uh, who are currently up and it's really late at night uh invite all your friends yeah. yep that sounds awesome. <clears throat> Party at Nicolay's place. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good. Cool. Um, um, okay. Awesome. So I, I I wanted to start highlighting a little bit some of the stuff in progress and uh, some of the specs that people are putting together as part of this meeting to get more people looking at them. Um, because we have a lot of exciting things happening. Um, and we also have a whole bunch of PRs going on and issues going on. So it can be a little bit difficult um, if you're just trying to do a linear scan to figure out where all the pieces are and what interesting things are going on. So I wanted to go ahead and, and take a few minutes if that's okay and sort of highlight a few of the things that I know are happening and give folks the opportunity to highlight things that they may know that are happening that I have missed in a linear scan of the issues and PRs and then to point a little bit at some of the specs that are floating out there that could definitely use additional comments. Um, does that sound good to folks? Yep. Yeah. 
Um, so, yes. and I wanted to sort of give the folks who are working on the stuff an opportunity if they would like to uh, speak up a bit about the stuff they're working on. Now, I, I know not everyone is super comfortable speaking up in meetings, so it's perfectly fine to, to, to sort of demure and I'll hum a few bars, but I did want to get folks the opportunity to talk a little bit about, you know, what they're actively working on. So I, um, the first one up is DNS. I think Denise is working on that. Do you want to say a few things, Denise? He may be muted. Yeah, probably yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I'll go ahead and hum a few bars then if he's not wanting to speak up or having trouble with muting. Um, the basic idea behind the DNS stuff is that one of the things we're going to have to be able to do is if you start a pod and you connect to a network service, obviously your Kubernetes DNS has to keep working, but you may also need DNS from that network service. And so the DNS spec sort of talks about a way to do that. And after consulting with a bunch of folks, including some folks from the core DNS side, um, <clears throat> it, it turned out that probably the best way of doing that is to have a small DNS sidecar. And according to the core DNS guys, it can, it's basically like a 10 meg hit. So it's a really small thing. Um, that can fan the DNS out to normal Kubernetes DNS, but also to different uh, network services that have indicated that there have DNSs to be queried as well. And so if you can imagine a query goes out, it gets fanned out to all the possible folks. And then the first response that comes back that is not a negative response gets uh, returned to the workload. And so Denise has been working on that bit by bit. Um, and I think he's got, you know, a couple of PRs that, that are going by, and he's got one that's actively out there that's being reviewed. Um, so I wanted to bring that to folks' attention um, just in case they were interested in this area. They wanted to comment, review, you know, get involved, et cetera. Um, okay. Uh, is there anything specific here in the spec that you want to point out to? No, I mean, uh, effectively, I, I sort of said a few things going by about sort of the idea behind it, which mm -hmm. is just to sort of multiplex DNS. Um, but the, the net net result from a user point of view is that if I connect to a network service like a VPN, where say I've got DNS inside my corporate intranet, um, then it will result in me getting proper DNS service from my corporate intranet in addition to getting it from Kubernetes, or at least that's the, the intention. And also it supports all kinds of cool features here, right? Yeah, yeah um, <clears throat> true, true. I mean, th this was really quite excellent work <clears throat> that was done by, um, by Denise. And, and he's trying to break it up, I know, into sort of smaller manageable pieces. So I don't think it all is fully turned on when this, when this patch lands. I think he's breaking it into sort of more manageable, more reviewable pieces mm -hmm. as we go. Perfect. Uh, one thing that I wanted to add here is that uh, during the discussion that we kind of me, Ed and Fred had at uh, KubeCon Europe with some uh, members of the Kubernetes uh, teams that actually this could be very useful for uh, like um, as an experience for having a sidecar DNS uh, could be useful for other projects and other um, initiatives. So uh, it will definitely have a much larger impact than NSM only. But okay, we're doing it for ourselves primarily. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, to shop this around as well. <coughs> you know, I'm pretty sure that when we start to approach uh, other service meshes or uh, even just the uh, multi-cluster uh, federated use case, that something like this will be immensely useful. Yeah, no, I, I, I could see all kinds of utility for it. I mean, it, it's it's really interesting. One of the things that's sort of thematically coming out of the work that we're doing here is taking everything down from a cluster granularity to a workload granularity. And I think this is just an extension of the same thought. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, it's actually quite funny in talking to some of the more senior Kubernetes people, like the very first thing they brought up when I first talked to them about it was what are you doing for DNS? So it's definitely an important thing. Cool. Um, so next up is security. Um, I don't know if you want to say a few words about security, Ilya. Do we have Ilya on the call? Yes, hi. I'm here. Awesome. 
uh, this PR is provide uh, just uh, secure internal gRPC connections uh, without uh, any tokens or something. Uh, but I have a separate PR that has all the security stuff, uh, just like proof of concept, I think. And now I'm breaking it into pieces. Uh, so, I mean, one of the things that's exciting with the security is, and this I think is true for some of these things, uh, quite a lot of these things, you sort of have to go and figure out how you're going to get there. Um, <clears throat> by the way, I think if you go look, you're, you're looking at the original document and there was a, a second one that was done. Oh, okay. Um, but the, a lot of these things takes a lot of code to actually figure out what you're doing, right? Because there's a lot of innovation involved. And so for a bunch of them, and I, I know that Ilya did this for security, he went and sort of did the whole thing soup to nuts. And then, you know, you look back at what you've done and you realize that you've just written a really, really big patch. And so he's been kind enough to try and break it into pieces to make it easier to review. And so what are those, yeah, I think you're on the third piece now, Ilya? Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> you're on the third piece yes, of the security. Yes. Uh, that's true, yes, third piece. Yeah. And, and this ends up being kind of cool because we are using sort of industry standards, Spiffy Spire kinds of approaches for the most part for this. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we're actually doing that's kind of cool is around provenance because you can end up passing through a bunch of network service managers. And if you're trying to decide whether or not something should be admitted, it's not enough to know, do I trust the client? Because the in, in the intermediate, you know, network service managers kind of change the message. You you may want to evaluate whether you trust the cluster that it that whose hands it passed through and other things. So there, there's a little bit of cleverness with that for Providence that's kind of cool. So if folks are interested in security, that would be great to go get involved with reviewing and and stop. Um, <clears throat> My favorite into the domain. Yeah, no. Do you want to say a few words about inner domain, Artem? Um, I just don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> that's maybe, okay. Uh, that's right now inner domain is already working between different clouds, so we uh, we just need to split it into a few smaller pieces. So I had a kind of a, a set of questions regarding, uh, okay, documentation is one thing, but then if you can sh at least share with us now uh, your experience, like have you tried, uh, I don't know, a packet cluster to Google cloud cl cluster, or have you tried, you know, different, different clouds? Um, What's your overall experience with setting is this up? Is it complex to set it up? Like just more more general, I don't know, description about your experience of. Sure. Yeah, I already prepared uh, integration tests, um, which connects uh, packets, uh, Google Cloud, uh, Amazon Cloud, with each other, and uh, it works from one side to another without any problems. Mm -hmm. But how much manual work? I mean, I'm I'm trying to look at slightly further after this. Like, if we have to sell this uh, feature to a, a system administrator or system integrator, someone that, that is supposed to deploy such kind of services, how how complex is is it to 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 set this up? Is there any manual work involved? How much is it? Something like this. Uh, we just need to start um, proxy and assign on each side. And uh, cl uh, like client side should uh, uh, put uh, uh, destination address into network service name, and that's it. Uh, it should work. Okay. Okay. That sounds. Yeah. I I still am, am am not sure who is who is setting up the DNS, but I guess that this is something that we can discuss. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're just using like a system. Uh, like DNS, or you can put uh, IP address there. Right now it's working with IPv4, um, but I think next uh, we can improve it for IPv6. Yep. And uh, also um, you can easily add uh, your own uh, DNS resolver into the project. 
I think I already put uh, that place into the documentation. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that'll be fantastic because that that means we'll be easy we'll be able to easily integrate this plus the uh, DNS fan out. Yeah, no, I, I think that gets to be super cool. And <clears throat> obviously for this to actually be secure, the security stuff has to land as well. Uh, so there'll be some interesting stuff when that happens. But I'm super excited about the interdomain stuff. Um, the other thing that's going to be interesting with it is, um, you know, sort of, it, it, it's going to be interesting seeing the kinds of interesting things that people try and do with it. So. Um, there's a lot of good room for experimentation. It's super exciting, and I'm hoping to see folks playing with it more once it lands. Cool. <clears throat> so once we get those three landed in, um, would it? Do you think it'll be safe to say that we have a that we have a federated uh, Kubernetes networking use case uh, that is that is solid or? Do you think there's any other tasks that need to be done between now I, I and- I think there, there may be one last task that we may want to do after the security stuff lands around authorization policies. Um, you know, basically allowing people to configure authorization policies. Um, we might want to do that because right now it, it's set up in such a way that your authorization could be done by your network service endpoint and your client, but that's asking a lot of network service endpoints and clients. Um, and so you probably want the option of having that be policy that's provided by your network service mesh. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So but even no. just getting the functionality down, I mean, will is going to excite a lot of groups. So oh no, it, it absolutely is. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's. <clears throat> all kinds of exciting uh, and we should definitely look at how we want to go about promoting it and that was actually one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the things in progress right now because there are so many exciting things happening but um, if you're just you know if you aren't real close to the ground on the PRs you might have missed them going by so um, on the share I'm only seeing like a very tiny sliver of the, the document right now I don't know if anybody else is having that issue yeah same for me uh, on the screen share? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Is it better now? Much better. Much better, yep, yep. Okay. So, next well, up, after, go ahead. I was going to say, we have increased pluggability, but I'll let you go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the next step is the increased pluggability stuff. And, and this is sort of the observation that Network Service Manager is getting kind of big. Uh, Victoria, I think this was something you were spearheading. Do you want to talk a little about it? Sure. Uh, the main idea here is to move all cluster specific logic from NSM. Uh, so we want to get rid of this hard dependency between uh, Kubernetes uh, sidecar and uh, NSM. Uh, right now, uh, Kubernetes sidecar uh, is uh, started on uh, 5,000 ports and uh, NSM should know about this uh, particular port. And uh, we want uh, uh, Kubernetes sidecar uh, just register in NSM. So there is no this hard link. Um, and also we want uh, all cluster specific stuff be in this sidecar. And if you want to move, well, for some reason, <laughs> from Kubernetes, we uh, just uh, need to replace this plugin and implement uh, another plugin. So that's it. Uh, we started with uh, moving exclude prefixes uh, logic, and we'll continue with uh, moving uh, uh, registry logic and mo moving it and define it as a plugin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for, for those of you guys who are a little less familiar, um, one of the things Network Service Mesh does, um, it, particularly within Kubernetes, is it will avoid colliding with the prefixes that are in use in the cluster. Um, and so breaking that out into sort of a, a plugin, and, and, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Victoria, when you say plugin, you mean things sort of in the same spirit as what's done with CRI or CSI in Kubernetes, where things register themselves with gRPC and in the system in network service manager interacts with them with gRPC. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. So not a plugin in the traditional sense, because Go doesn't usually work that way, but, but more in the Kubernetes sense. And, and hopefully this will make Network Service Manager a lot simpler um, and make the entire system a lot more flexible and modular. So, and I know we've had several people speak up for flexible and modular lately. So I think it's probably good. <clears throat> so then the other one is um, Artem, I think you, do you want to say a few words about the starting, the, the first stuff you're doing to start on the SRV6 support? Um, That's all. <laughs> As you already noticed in the document, uh, I started preparing NSM for more than one remote mechanism because right now we have only uh, VXLAN. So, and I uh, already start uh, preparing uh, everything for IPv6, but just started. Yeah, no, it's, it's early days. But it's, it's super exciting. I know there are certain people on the call who shall remain nameless who have been very interested to see SRV6 for a long time now. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know who you're talking about, Ed. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I know you, you have no interest, Daniel. Um, oh, no. <laughs> the other thing that actually came up, um, this came up around some minutia around VNI handling for the interdomain stuff. Um, was uh, I think Nikolai observed quite correctly that we probably want to figure out a way to move some of the things like DNI selection down into the NSM data plane, what I think we're now calling the NSM forwarder, uh, yeah. which you know rather than having that done in uh, the NSM manager because it makes the system much more flexible and pluggable, um, we probably are going to have to make some small changes to the data plane API to do that. Um, but we'll try and keep that to a minimum. But that there's that issue literally is uh, you know 1411. That's literally a conversation that started this morning. Um, and so definitely, if you're interested in how that works, please jump in on that issue. Will do. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. And then um, the kernel forwarding plane stuff. Um, do we have? Anyone to speak on that here? I think someone added that, so I don't have the top of my head. I will. I will. I will. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, an effort that we've been working uh, for some time now. Uh, Rauslav has been working. He's not on the call. Um, the idea is that we wanted to use kernel only uh, primitives to be able to connect pods with kernel on only, of course, interfaces. Um, and uh, this initial PR is just adding this capability without really testing it and doing much with it. But there will be a follow-up that will essentially make it run alongside uh, uh, VPP and be part of the CI. Um, the idea is that, um, for example, local pot-to-pot uh, -pot connections over uh, network uh, over uh, yeah, kernel interfaces will be handled by it and it will help us uh, refine uh, some things around uh, supporting multiple forwarding planes which will be helpful later when we want to add SRLV for example uh, it will also help um, kind of uh, in, in, in the course of this work we, we cleaned up some things uh, allowing for adding uh, more or less flawlessly another forwarding plane. So when other guys come with uh, other ideas and we know that there are some uh, threat, uh, um, uh, this is essentially something that we believe will be used as a, um, you know, one example of how to add things on top end. Well, I mean, it, 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 it shouldn't be underestimated how, how awesome this is as a choice of work because the kernel forwarding plane stuff is both useful and an excellent foil for going through and shaking out the issues with supporting multiple data planes. And multiple data planes, particularly multiple simultaneous data planes, is going to be hugely important as we start moving to mm -hmm. handling hardware next. Um, and, and it's sort of literally the simplest possible thing you could have done that is interesting that actually shakes out all these problems um, and gets them fixed. So it's a really good choice of, of thing to work on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so 
yeah, I mean, uh, I think that it's uh, in an almost final state. I know that uh, Andre did some review today, someone else, or uh, yesterday. Uh, if someone else is interested, please go at your thoughts. And I think that we should be able to merge it within this week if everything goes uh, fine. That's it. So, <clears throat> awesome. Cool. Do, do other folks have things that they have in progress they wanted to raise here? I mean, as always, feel free to add your stuff to the agenda as we go, but I, I do want to make sure that if we've got other people who are working on interesting chunks of things. Um, oh, I actually, I just remembered one that I should add. I've been puttering away at some SDK stuff um, that I should probably link in here. Um, including the, the thing that I'm most amused by with it is that I've, I've actually done it in a way that is taking tracing internal to the SDK so that you can trace through the different elements that you're using. Um, so let me get that linked in here. Um, and that, that ends up giving you like cool stuff where you can sort of see the um, trace through the internal components as well, not just through the external gRPC calls, which at least is making me very happy. Maybe I just have an unnatural affinity for traces. Have you guys seen the way, I'm pretty sure you do, the way Kielis visualizes the flows into a mesh? The way whom? Kiali. The, the tool that the Kelly tool that you leverage to validate what Istio does in a mesh? Istio. I don't think so. I, 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 it would be wonderful if you could provide some pointers. Yes. This is a, actually, that's what I posted on the, on the Slack is a, having that same visibility into an NSM mesh would be insane. Okay, well, that, that's super cool because we have had a lot of people think various things about how to add visibility into network service mesh. Um, we've got some metric stuff that, we, that was worked by Mathieu. Um, <clears throat> and we've also got um, people who have, have mused a bit about using IOAM headers and that kind of stuff. But, but more, more stuff to learn from would be excellent. Yeah, we also have Ivana working on the SMI, which is more or less also, I mean, at least for, for the first uh, attempt we are mostly looking at uh, she's looking at the metric yep. part of it so that's uh, i mean kind of in the same direction of trying to, to to be able to get more information and probably present it in some format to the outside world we we i think that that a lot of people if not everyone here understand that that this is a very 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 crucial point for for the project to succeed i mean being able to see what's going on is one of the things that people are who can get the meshes at all. Right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, there, there is no active development about uh, uh, using uh, NIC hardware or specific SRIOB uh, uh, features? Uh, so it, it has been on the list of things we intend to do for a while now. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, so effectively, part of what it comes down to is getting it spec'd out and getting someone who's interested in working on it. Is that something you would be interested in working on with you? Yes, I've started looking at uh, how I can, uh, from the SDK, uh, embed uh, uh, a specific NIC or things like this. Ah, yeah. okay, cool. That actually raises quite a bit the priority since you're interested in working on it, um, of, of sort of writing some stuff down. Um, it, it, we, we should definitely chat offline. Um, cause I have some thoughts there and you, I'm sure you have some thoughts there and it would be good just to sync up. Also, you, you, putting together the spec doesn't mean that you have to be the one to implement it as well. So there, there's value in even coming up with just the spec. Uh, but if you intend to implement it, fantastic. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take as much as you're willing to give. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, are you talking about the gateway type of, uh... Yes, of course. This is one of uh, the main use cases. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we are, we're doing something similar for the CNF test bed uh, with Taylor and Michael, at least we intend to. <laughs> uh, 
but it's not as formal as whatever you have proposed. Like it's more or less manual, and this is not great for the time being. But at least maybe we'll we will we will help pave the way for for further development. But I know that there are various ideas here. Like I know that Ed has proposed uh, something uh, like uh, we can consume the external hardware as a service. Then, um, then there, there is this spec about the gateways and which kind of tries to mimic the approach for, you know, what Kubernetes has uh, uh, ingress. Um, uh, one of the yeah. things you might want to take a look at, Matthew, and the stuff you're, doing, you're looking at for gateway stuff is go take a look at the inner domain spec because yeah. I tried yeah. to, leave, to leave architectural space in there for what you were talking about doing with the gateway stuff. Um, in the sense that you can have proxy network service managers and proxy network service registrars that can link up with whatever you're doing for gateways in terms of data plane. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, I have a look here. Thank you. Yeah, and, and if you have any questions, let me know. Whether or not I actually fully you know, gave you all the stuff you need for what you have in mind is a good question, but I at least tried. Um, so, um, cool. <clears throat> so specs to review. We, we've got quite a few specs that are sort of running around um, right now that, that I think folks would like to, you know, in addition to, to the ones that are actually somewhat in progress, where, again, input is welcome. One of the ones running loose was there's a general desire to, <laughs> right now, the way a, a, a client connects to the network service manager involves it connecting over a Unix file socket, and the Unix file socket has been injected uh, via device plugin. And so the idea here would be to have, once security lands, to explore using TCP to have the pod connect to its local network service manager. Um, and so there, there's sort of a spec looking at how we might go about doing this. Um, and so more eyeballs would definitely be better there. Um, and that would simplify a, a, a bunch of things, potentially. We would still definitely want um, to use device plugin to inject things for MemIF cross connects. But we might then not need it for non -mem the non-MemIF case. Yeah, I also add, uh, I suppose for MemIF case, we could uh, have uh, move this logic to, uh, for example, VPP-based uh, data plane only. Uh, so it, I suppose, also possible. Uh, mm. And with security, we could have just one uh, similar to Kubernetes, the Unix socket to connect to uh, NS Manager. And if the client need MemIF, uh, it will request uh, from the data plane uh, workspace. So it's also, uh, I suppose we discussed it a bit some time ago but we could think about it a bit more and probably write yeah, a spec. I mean, anything that makes the system simpler would be great. I mean, there, there, there is some trickiness involved, but, but anything that makes the system simpler would be great. Um, cool. So, <clears throat> all right then. Um, we have the SMI. Yep. Is, uh, Ivana, do you want to say a couple of words about this? What's going on? Yeah, the the spec uh, it own is uh, not uh, up to date with the latest thing, but uh, um, I'm currently on the metrics part and the Prometheus integration. We had some discussion with Radoslav and Nick while was sharing the approach uh, at Oton and um, what we agreed on that we'll have uh, well representative metrics is to match them with uh, the client namespace as it's unique so that you can make queries uh, in Prometheus and it is it will be well integrated with uh, the SMI requirements and uh, for the uh, other part of uh, this um, we'll need to integrate in the community there I'm still I, I see some movement there uh, still waiting for them to announce uh, some weekly meetings so that for the specs need, we need to add uh, network service route because they are working with HTTP only for the moment but this is uh, not the first focus we are first focusing on the metrics part 
Um, I, I will, I'm going to update this because uh, I, I didn't update the spec very much. Yeah. Okay. And then the last of the things here is uh, improved selection code. I'm not aware of this. Yeah, so th this is a, a spec. <clears throat> it's been sort of bouncing around for a while. Um, oh, okay. it, it's actually, um, oh. it, it's kind of interesting. And this is maybe a candidate for something to look at with some of the plugin stuff as well um, that we discussed earlier. Um, because there's effectively when you sort of get down to it, um, what this guy is actually looking at wanting to do is to be able to plug in a different selection criteria among candidates other than round robin, right? So round robin is, a, is basically wonderful in that you can do it really easily, um, but there are lots of more sophisticated things people might want to do to select a network service uh, endpoint. Um, and, <clears throat> and so this was sort of looking at modularizing the selection process uh, so that you could bring other considerations into it. Okay, the, the idea behind that, I know Buteyna, she's a colleague of mine, and uh, the idea be behind that is for now to rely on, uh, on the metric reported by uh, NSM in order to, to create a cross-connect uh, with endpoints that are, that are uh, less loaded. Uh, the, this is uh, one of the first idea, but... Uh, of course, we can expand the concept. And, and I'm actually interested in this in two, at, in two levels. The, 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 the most interesting level for me is making this modular enough that people can easily experiment. And then the second level of interest for me is the kinds of cool things that would result from those experiments. Um, so it's all about wanting to make it much, much easier um, for folks. So I, I wanted to sort of draw people's attention to this and get some more people involved in commenting on it because it is a very cool idea. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. I don't know if we will have time to share things here, but yeah, um, on the examples uh, re repo site, uh, we have more and more examples there. And uh, I have recently added a number of improvements uh, just to, to, to make life of the people that are using examples there. So you can list the examples with some simple descriptions. Uh, you can browse, browse the, the you, you can actually call for a description which essentially shows the, um, Specific examples, README file, just to, 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 to make to make you to make you select whatever you want to do without really running it and going browsing the code. I can only do this. Uh, you, can, you can do this only on the code. code <coughs> and then uh, I am working on this universal CNF, which is a thing that uh, we try to prepare for for CNF uh, testbed. Um, and it's essentially, uh, I don't know uh, how to describe it, uh, a config map driven uh, BPP agent front end. Does that sound uh, meaningful or? Uh, the idea is that you have a single container and then you write different config maps and it behaves differently. Like it can implement a bridge, it can implement a router, uh, it can implement uh, whatever is needed there, uh, or at least whatever the BDP agent can expose. Um, mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, something you might want to take a look at that, that sort of comes to mind is, because I do like the notion of config mag Griffin, mm -hmm. um, go take a look at how core DNS does its, confi its configuration stuff. Um, it, it, I think it may map very well to what you're doing with the universal CNF. OK. Okay, um, I, I don't know for sure that it will be a fit, but but they they also have a situation where they they sort of have their in their internals are very modular, and they have different pieces that configure them that you can bring to bear there. So it, okay, it might be a reasonable pattern to look at. I will. Thank you. Cool. Uh, and Nic Nicolai, yeah. uh, does this mean that uh, the CNF test bed will uh, by default embed uh, NSM? Uh, 
I think that this is one of the use cases that we are looking to enable there, uh, NSM. Okay, but uh, all the use cases within the CNF test bed uh, uh, will uh, will be uh, uh, able to use NSM. Is that what I... What? That's for Taylor to ask to to to, to answer. I'm, I'm just uh, trying to help them enable it. Could be great. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Taylor. Um, I, I think we'll probably have other options at, in the test bed, specifically because other things are being worked on, and anything that someone wants to contribute. I I, I do believe that most of the upcoming use cases will be um, connected to all the service chains and driven um, with NSM though. So I think it's going to be a core part, even if there's other test cases that may use other um, options. I believe that the, the CNF test bed is our, at least our, currently our biggest chance to prove that NSM uh, is a fit for the telco dynamic infrastructure use cases where you can bring up you know slices and you can reconfigure things uh, at runtime even uh, and things like that so yeah we should use it to the best of our capabilities the upcoming events that uh, open network summit and kubecon are all around test cases that use nsm in the CNF test bed. And the other event that was mentioned was the tutorial for using the CNF test bed. Yeah. And ideally, ideally um, during that tutorial, bringing up and having an example test case that people could run would also be NSM. So, yep, we're looking forward to it, the, especially for the more complex. Uh, use cases. We've kind of been holding off on implementing those because they get pretty complex if we're doing it essentially manually or you could say out of band, a lot of custom scripts and stuff to do all the connections uh, is how we've been doing it. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. I guess that's it for today. Yeah, I, I, it's been kind of an eventful meeting and we're right at the top of the hour, so. <laughs> awesome. Well, Talk to you guys later. Take care. Um, anyways, we will see you all next week. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Guys. Have a nice week. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.